Okay, so I recently went to a singles event, and it was 90% women. Fellas, welcome back. Today, we're tackling a revealing topic. Men are done. 90% of singles events are women. Why men will never go to singles events again. We'll explore the reasons behind this imbalance, how it's affecting both men and women in the dating scene, and what it means for future social interactions. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more insights. Let's get started. Every man that is single that has a desire to be in a relationship or find a partner, I have some dating advice that's going to help you in the early phases of dating or the talking stage. Generally, at this period of time, there's not a lot of emotions involved, especially if you haven't even gone on a date yet. Women are genuinely just looking to see if there's any sort of a connection there, that you guys get along, that you have a good or a fun personality, that there's similar interests, and what your overall intentions are. Women also want to know that you actually have an interest in them by asking them questions and trying to get to know them. I think this is so simple, but it's really easy for us to only want to talk about ourselves. So just asking questions and being interested in them is so important, but there's a massive difference between showing that interest versus smothering someone and giving desperado. What I mean by that is you don't need to be sending four or five messages in a row. If she doesn't respond, just give her the time to respond because if she's interested, she will eventually respond to you even if it's in a couple of hours or so. You don't need to keep following up with a bunch of messages. And in this period of time, I've learned that there's no use in texting about so many personal or intimate details and sharing like overloads of things about yourself because that's what the dates are for. Don't romanticize a text message or what you guys are talking about in a text. Get straight to the date and actually meeting in person to see if it's going to go anywhere rather than wasting time chatting away over text. Also, just be genuine, be yourself, be real, whatever that looks like for you. Do not try to put on a facade and be someone that you're not because that mask will slowly slip over time and women will essentially see you for who, who you truly are and see your true colors. So just from the gate, be yourself and be you. And the person that's going to be meant for you is going to connect with that version of you and it's going to create an amazing, amazing connection and relationship. Here's the thing. Men have stopped playing the dating games. They've had enough of the endless hoops to jump through, the unrealistic standards, and the lack of respect. It's become crystal clear that a lot of American women are a lost cause when it comes to relationships and the real issue. There's no feminine energy left in them. The natural feminine energy that used to create balance and connection in relationships is disappearing. Instead, Many modern women have embraced a more combative, demanding, and entitled attitude. They've traded in softness, nurturing, and understanding for a constant power struggle, leaving men feeling exhausted and uninterested. Men aren't looking for competition in a relationship. They want partnership, peace, and mutual respect. But more and more, it's becoming harder to find that here. So what happens? Men are walking away. They're opting out of the dating scene altogether or looking elsewhere, sometimes overseas, where traditional values and feminine energy still exist. They've realized that chasing after women who lack what they truly value isn't worth their time, and they're no longer willing to be part of a broken system. American women need to understand that the game has changed. Men are no longer willing to deal with the drama, the games, and the constant lack of respect. If there's no feminine energy left, there's nothing to draw men in and keep them interested. Men have checked out, and it's not hard to see why. Okay, so I recently went to a singles event, and it was 90% women. And I was wondering, like, where's all the dudes? Um, I don't know, but they're not there. And that's cool, not like I care. She went to a singles event and was shocked to see that 90% of the people there were women. That's a telling sign, isn't it? Women have spoken loud and clear with their unrealistic standards, and guess what? Men listened. The truth is, men are staying away from women because they've had enough. They've checked out of the dating scene because they're tired of the games, the constant accusations, and being made to feel like they aren't even human. Modern dating has become a battlefield, and many women have pushed men to the edge. Instead of genuine connection, 
we see women chasing after unattainable standards, focusing on shallow qualities like status, money, and superficial traits. Meanwhile, men who are genuinely trying are either ignored or labeled as creeps for simply existing. It's no wonder men are done. They're tired of being punished for things they didn't even do. All while women continue to raise the bar higher and higher, expecting perfection. It's almost ironic. Women claim they don't need men, and guess what? Men are starting to agree. A lot of guys are realizing they're better off walking away from this chaos and either staying single or seeking companionship elsewhere, in places where they feel valued and appreciated. Some have even gone overseas, where traditional values and mutual respect still mean something. Men are tired of being blamed for everything wrong in dating and relationships. They're holding women accountable for their actions and behaviors now. And if that means stepping away, that's exactly what they're doing. Modern women can date each other, keep setting the bar unrealistically high, and play by themselves in their own little game. Meanwhile, men are reclaiming their peace, their sanity, and their self-respect. I am off to a singles event tonight in Brisbane. On Thursdays, they hold single events in Brisbane, I think Sydney, Melbourne, and I saw a girl on TikTok post that she was going a few weeks ago, and then I commented something, and then another girl has messaged and said, should we meet up for this time? So I've never been before. Um, doesn't seem like my thing, seems really awkward, but I'm going because I get to meet up with this girl beforehand. Um, if anything, obviously, I don't have high hopes for meeting someone that I'm going to date or potentially date, um, but at least I'll hopefully make some friends. So um, you don't, yeah, get out of your comfort zone if you don't do these kind of things, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't think I'm going to meet someone that I'm like the love of my life because I'm not really a city girl anyway, so I doubt I'm going to meet someone that has such common interest with me and that I have not um, a lot in common with in the city because I'm not really a city person. Um, I mean, I like to go sometimes, but it's like not my thing to be there all the time. But yeah, like it, what's the vibe? Is it like everyone's just like awkward when they're there or is it, I feel like it's going to be more like, like a friend vibe. Um, and if people go all the time, is it the same people going to be there all the time? I've never been before. But, yeah, it would be – it's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, definitely going to have a couple of vodka sodas, but I can't get drunk because um, I'm driving. Plus, me getting drunk in, like, that kind of environment is that's a silly idea because I can be a bit of a goose. Um, so it's probably good that I'm driving in. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. Just something to do, I guess. I work from home all day today, so – gets me out of the house. So I will let you guys know how it goes. Singles events have basically turned into women's gripe sessions where they gather, complain about the so-called lack of quality men, and then leave, still wondering why they're single. It's like a cycle that never ends. Women show up expecting to meet their dream guy, only to spend the night complaining about how no one measures up to their sky-high standards. But here's the thing. The reality of dating is staring them in the face and they're just not willing to see it. And who's showing up to these events? Simps, mostly. The guys who will bend over backward to please, who think showing up and being overly accommodating will win them favor. They're the ones being overlooked, of course, because the women at these events are still holding out for some ideal man who doesn't actually exist. These simps keep attending, hoping that maybe this time things will be different, but it never is. The truth is, men who know their worth, the ones who aren't trying to play these games aren't wasting their time at singles events anymore. They've checked out, moved on, and realized that bending to unrealistic expectations isn't worth the effort. So, while the simps and the complainers keep going in circles, the men who aren't interested in being anyone's backup plan are out there living their lives, and they're not looking back. One time, a man flew me out to California for a date, like a whole weekend. We're having a great time, okay? wine tasting, all this stuff, meeting friends. At the wine tasting, we're at like our second spot, we're a little buzzed, whatever. The truth starts coming out, right? I mid-sip, he's like, I need to tell you something. What do you need to tell me? Well, you know, you need to know that you're a six. Excuse me, what do you mean I'm a six? No, you need to know that your looks qualify you as a six. And I was like, 
why are you telling this is kind of inappropriate and like why are you telling me that he's like you just need to know your place that you're a six what you flew me out here to see me you're attracted to me you wanted to see me and now you're telling me that i need to know my place and that i'm a six I'm sorry. What? Anyways, I then continued to have like a six month situation with that man. Let's just be real for a second. Women hate hearing the truth, especially when it comes to where they rank in the dating market. Too often, they walk around thinking they're a perfect 10, when in reality, they're maybe a four at best. And when a man finally has the courage to tell them where they really stand, they lose it. It's like they can't handle the reality check. Take this situation. She thought she was a 10, but that guy actually gave her a generous 6. Honestly, he was being way too kind. If I had to call it, she's a 4, maybe even a 3 on a bad day. But instead of reflecting on that and understanding why she's not getting the results she wants in dating, she'll probably get defensive, blame men, or claim her standards are too high. The problem is, a lot of women have been living in an echo chamber hyping each other up with empty compliments. You're so beautiful, queen. Or you deserve the best girl. But none of that matters if the reality doesn't match up. When the rubber hits the road, men aren't fooled by the social media filters, makeup, or whatever temporary boost of confidence they're trying to ride. And when a man finally says, listen, you're not a 10, it's like the ultimate betrayal to them. But guess what? It's the truth. The bottom line is that these women need to stop living in delusion. It's not about what they think they are. It's about how they actually present themselves. A man telling her she's a six? That's him giving her more grace than she probably deserves. But she needs to hear it, because living in denial isn't helping anyone, especially herself. So yeah, the blame is squarely on her. Women need to start accepting the truth for what it is and stop expecting men to constantly feed them these delusional fantasies. Reality is reality, and the sooner they come to terms with it, the better their dating lives will be. Until then, they'll continue chasing the unattainable while men keep checking out. Last week I went to a speed dating event and I left because I felt unsafe. If you've ever been speed dating, you'll know that usually it's tables and chairs and the woman will be sat across the table from the man at a reasonable distance. The women sit there, the men rotate. Well, not at this venue because there barely were any tables and chairs and they were expecting people to sit next to each other, cozied up on seats like this. Then there was an area like this with like a horseshoe table and they were expecting three different couples, so six people to sit there. The woman would have to sit directly next to the man turn towards each other and then the people in the middle would be trapped in and every time the men had to move tables they would have to climb over the woman there was another table like this where they were expecting four people to sit on one table two couples each couple cozied up next to each other on the same freaking seat you can see here how it would have worked like those two ladies sat next to each other that is how close you would have to sit to a man you don't know and you may not feel comfortable with and let's be realistic, while speed dating does attract some normal guys, it also attracts some odd characters. This is the venue, it's called the Ladybird Bar in Islington. And as soon as I got there, I was like, this is not appropriate for speed dating. It's a speakeasy, there's no tables, it's too dark, too loud. It just was not appropriate for speed dating. Anyway, when I got there, I started chatting to another girl who also told me that she felt uncomfortable with the situation and she didn't want to be sitting next to guys shoulder to shoulder that she hadn't met and doesn't feel comfortable with either. So we both decided to leave. I wasn't really bothered about getting my money back because I was there on a credit because I'd gone to another speed dating event and hadn't got any matches. But the girl that I'd met had spent 20 pounds on her ticket. So she wrote an email of complaint. They couldn't even be bothered to read it. She outlined all of her concerns about how the venue was not appropriate for speed dating, how as women, we felt extremely unsafe and not comfortable how the men would have to climb over each other to move tables, how putting multiple people on a table means you can't have a private conversation. And she explained that we left because neither of us felt comfortable. They just sent her a generic reply written as if she had complained that there weren't enough men there, which is obviously just a stock thing they send out. You can't be expecting women to go and meet complete strangers and basically sit on their lap. It's not comfortable and it's not fair. And then to receive a complaint email 
where this lady that I met outlined that that's not an appropriate venue for speed dating. Please don't put any speed dating events on there again because it's putting women in an uncomfortable situation. They couldn't even be asked to read that and just sent some generic reply. Very disappointing. I was kind of done with speed dating anyway. Certainly would not be attending any original dating events in the future because this is very poor customer service, very poor safeguarding for women. Any women watching, do you think we were right to leave? Would you feel comfortable speed dating in that situation? Because I certainly didn't. Here's the reality. When you walk into these speed dating events, it's obvious that the room is packed with women, not men. Women dominate these spaces, and honestly, it's because men have checked out of this whole dating scene. The type of men that these women have in mind, the ones they really want, aren't showing up, and that's where the discomfort kicks in. Women get uncomfortable because they realize the pool they're fishing from isn't what they expected. They came looking for that ideal man, but instead, they're left with the guys who are willing to go to these events, and let's face it, most of them are simps. The men attending these speed dating events, they're not the ones with options. Real men, the ones who have their lives together, their values set, and know their worth, aren't wasting their time in a room full of strangers hoping to catch someone's attention in three minutes. They're out there living their lives, meeting people organically, or frankly, just walking away from this modern dating mess altogether. Why? Because they don't need to compete in these settings where the odds are stacked against them, where women come in with inflated egos and expectations that no regular guy can meet. Women at these events want high-value man, but don't realize that those guys aren't speed dating. They've already checked out because they're tired of the games and the unrealistic demands. So, what you're left with are simps, guys who are hoping that maybe, just maybe, they can win a woman's favor by showing up and playing the game. But the harsh truth is, that's not what women want, and it's not what real men are willing to do. So yeah, the reality of speed dating is clear. It's a room full of women realizing the type of men they want aren't there, while the guys who do show up are often the simps. And that, right there, is why real men don't bother with these events. Give me a moment to show you why dating today is so hard for women. They're constantly going after men that really don't want them, just want their cheeks. Take a look at this. Watch this. He's literally on his way up here and I have like a few minutes, but I needed to, I wanted to make sure I recorded this just in case, you know, we get married because I really like it. But, um, yeah, so I don't know what tonight's going to be like and I'm excited to see what he plans on doing tonight. <laughs> okay, we got a woman who's excited about a man who's coming to her crib. Clearly she likes him. She wants him, right? She got her best makeup on. She put on her war paint. She got on her best outfit. She did her hair. She got all ready. And let's see how it's going to go at the end of the night. Take a look. So he ended up telling me that he wasn't ready for anything serious and that I deserve better. And that's how the night ended. Just an update. <laughs> how much y'all want to bet he still clapped the cheeks? <laughs> see, this is the diabolical work of dating. How much you guys want to bet that that man still got the cheeks? <laughs> how much you want to bet he ain't take her out on no date? He ain't take her out on no date. So on one hand, you got women that don't really like a guy demanding that they take them to the finest of steakhouses. And then on the other hand, you got women that actually like men who are letting them clap the cheeks without taking them nowhere after he tells her that you deserve somebody better than me. I'm no good for you. <laughs> but I'm going to still annihilate your cheeks. <laughs> Ladies, when a man tells you that, that means he does not want you. He's over there just to get some cheeks. And then he's... <laughs> Here's the thing. Women have this funny way of operating in the dating world. It's like they have a whole different playbook depending on who they're dealing with. They make all these strict rules and set boundaries for the men they're not really into. You'll hear things like, oh, I don't kiss on the first date, or I need to take it slow and get to know you first. But the moment they meet a guy they actually want, all those rules fly out the window. Suddenly, they're making exceptions left and right. It's a classic move. For the guys they don't want, it's hoops to jump through, endless standards, and demands that are impossible to meet. But for the ones they do want, the rules don't apply. That I don't text back right away policy? Gone. That whole, I don't hook up on the first date thing? Out the door. Because when she's into a guy, she'll bend over backward to keep him around. But here's the thing. This double standard isn't lost on men. We see it. Women can pretend like they're being fair or have these high standards, but it's obvious that they're just making life harder for the men they're not interested in while the ones they truly want get the royal treatment. It's not about values or principles. It's about convenience and desire. And honestly, 
that's part of the reason why a lot of men have walked away from the game. They're tired of the rules being applied only when it suits her. Men are waking up to this, and they're no longer willing to play by a rule book that changes based on how much interest she has in them. So, yeah, women make rules for the men they don't want and exceptions for the ones they do. And men have started to notice. I'm back to being single again, although I guess I was single the entire time, really. Um, I'm back to having no one on my roster, and I'm in the phase of dating where I'm just feeling a little bit hopeless. It would be one thing if I saw a lot of examples of couples falling in love who lived in New York all over my For You page, and when I heard about it, even when I saw it with any of my friends who were looking for men, but all of my friends are still single. Um, I am obviously still single. I don't know of any couple that has gotten together in New York uh, in the past year. Dating in New York has always been bad, but honestly, I've never had a hard time until the past year. It might be because I'm 31 and I want something serious, but before, I don't know, I would always just say that men are around and I only want one, and so I would just find one. Um, and they were all wonderful people. Like, I've only ever dated very good guys, but now, I don't know if all the good guys are taken. I don't know if all the good guys are not straight. I don't know if they have left New York. I don't know what it is about this city, but it just feels like this is where love comes to die. And New York to me has always been a pretty romantic city, so it's even more confusing for me when I'm out or when I'm looking around at dates or when I'm talking to my friends about their dating life, and it's just, it's all bad. Here's the thing. The good men are still out here. They just made a different choice. They've seen the games, the drama, and the unrealistic expectations, and instead of chasing relationships that bring more stress than joy, they chose peace. They realize that building themselves up Focusing on their personal growth and becoming the best versions of themselves was the real way forward. And in that process, they found something priceless, peace. There's no more bending over backward to meet impossible standards, no more guessing games, and no more drama. These men have learned that true fulfillment doesn't come from constantly trying to meet someone else's expectations. It comes from focusing on their own journey and happiness. The truth is, they don't want relationships that complicate their lives or drain their energy. They've seen enough to know that their peace of mind is worth more than anything else. They're investing in themselves, whether it's their careers, health, passions, or personal goals, and that's where they're thriving. It's not about checking out of life, it's about checking into the things that truly matter to them. So, while some women are still wondering where all the good men went, they need to realize that these men haven't disappeared. They've just chosen a different path, one where peace, growth, and self-respect come first. They're still here, but they've stopped chasing relationships that don't serve them, and they're better off because of it. I feel like I'm mourning a life I never have and never will have. I'm just like... <sighs> I. <laughs> you can hear the football game. Um, I'm just... I've been in my feels a lot lately, <sighs> probably for a lot of different reasons, but, um, you know, I'm 31 and I thought that I would be married. I thought I would have kids by now and I just had dinner with friends, great friends, but here I am being sad that I'm going home and I'm by myself. It's just me and the dog and I have a great life. I have a wonderful life. It's, <laughs> it's a better life than I probably could have imagined for myself, you know? Minus husband, kids. Like if you've been in a relationship for a really long time or if you have, if you got married young or whatever and you've never really lived by yourself, I just don't know if you understand how lonely that can be. And again, I have great friends, I have great family, but they don't live with me, you know? Anyway, um, six dresses came in the mail for me to try on, so let's make myself a little, little happier by trying to figure out if one actually fits me. I'll see you in the next video. Here's the harsh truth. The wall is undefeated, and it's a reality that a lot of people, especially women, don't want to acknowledge. As time goes on, looks fade, and no matter how much someone might try to deny it, age catches up with everyone. And while some women think they can keep playing the dating game forever, they eventually hit that wall where the same attention they once got starts to disappear. The problem is, many women spend their prime years chasing after excitement, bad boys, and setting unrealistically high standards, thinking they'll always have those options. But when the wall hits, 
they realize those options are no longer there. The same men they turned down or overlooked because they thought they had all the time in the world. Those men have moved on, either to younger women or to living their lives in peace, without the drama. It's a harsh reality, but it's undefeated. The youthful beauty that many women rely on to get attention and validation doesn't last forever. And when that fades, the game changes. At that point, it's not about being the hottest one in the room anymore. It's about what you bring beyond just looks, character, kindness, loyalty, all the things that actually matter in a long-term relationship. The wall doesn't lie. And while it might not be fun to accept, it's undefeated for a reason. Women who bank solely on their looks and keep pushing off settling down often face a rude awakening. Meanwhile, men who know their worth have moved on, built their lives, and aren't interested in entertaining what comes after the wall.